What's up guys, Kevin Cage here with another crypto update. Hope everybody's doing well and we got a bunch to dive into today. So first up, shared by the Algo Foundation. So highlighting the markets and crypto assets regulation, specifically the Mika compliant stablecoins. So we know that USDC or the US dollar coin and then EURC or the Euro coin are fully compliant in Mika. Now this markets and crypto assets regulation is a regulatory framework by the European Union basically creating a comprehensive set of rules for crypto assets. And what's important to know is right here Coinbase is delisting stable coins in Europe that don't comply with this Mika regulation like Tether. And we do have Algorand right here highlighting that they do have two Mika regulatory compliant options available to 450 million Europeans so we have USDCA or USDC on top of Algorand, and then we have the Euro dollar by Quantos. So with these regulatory frameworks being put in place, it's really important to see different L1 projects supporting USDC and the Euro. All right, next up for XRP and Ripple. So we've had a bunch of news recently, including the SEC appeal. We also had the Bitwise XRP ETP application being filed. And right here, we had Ripple receiving an in-principle approval from the DFSA in Dubai. We can see this also includes the Ripple Payments Direct, basically the new and more compliant version of what ODL once was that uses XRP, and this is going to be expanding throughout the UAE. So hopefully we can see some big expansion in the future. We can see with the DFSA authorization, Ripple is set to roll out its enterprise-grade digital asset infrastructure to a broader customer base in the UAE. Also be sure to talk about real-world assets on the XRP ledger, but remember this, last month we had Brad Garlinghouse saying the Ripple US dollar stablecoin could be issued in weeks, not months, and it's just been over a month. So the fact that Brad Garlinghouse did say weeks, not months, I do expect to see this launch pretty soon. Next up, super quick for Open Eden, so we're aware of this group earning US Treasury yields on-chain, tokenizing US Treasuries with TVL over $120 million. We have supported chains including Ethereum, Arbitrum, and the XRP Ledger. So we know a couple months back, Ripple invested $10 million into Open Eden's tokenized T-bill initiative, bringing tokenized treasury bills onto the XRP Ledger. And we also had Binance Labs investing in Open Eden that drive the growth of tokenized real-world assets in DeFi. We also got some news from Open Eden that they're delighted to announce that Velo Protocol has selected Open Eden Labs tokenized US Treasury bills as a reserve collateral asset for USDV. Until recently, USDV has been over collateralized by a basket of assets like Velo's native token Velo and Tether. So the move to include Open Eden's tokenized US Treasury bills to the stablecoin's reserves also unlocks new sources of yield for USDV holders. I also saw this shared by Crypto Insight UK, a really good discussion of David Schwartz discussing interoperability of the XRP ledger with XLR. And he goes on to say, I had no idea that two out of three people who created and launched Algorand are the founders of XLR. So I had no idea. I didn't confirm that, but that's definitely interesting. I knew early on that Coinbase Ventures was a early backer in XLR. I'm going to play this clip really quick. This gentleman has a really interesting point about XRP and the XRP ledger. XRP is already one of the largest assets, and it has been for a decade, and it doesn't even have a DeFi ecosystem. So just explaining the potential with real-world asset tokenization, and if the XRP ledger had a healthy DeFi ecosystem. All the things that interoperability, tokenization, and stablecoins could bring. You know, we're going to enable them to... Con to link their instance of like their stablecoin that's going to launch on XRPL with the instance of their stablecoin on, on Ethereum, right? So a holder of the asset can bridge it over to XRPL EVM with zero slippage, right? So you can, you can do these interesting things where if you work closely with the issuer of the asset, you can allow them to move the asset uh, without friction uh, across chains. But the one thing I'm most excited about happening on XRPL is finally opening up DeFi opportunities for, uh, you know, for XRP, right? Again, it's the biggest asset with one of the biggest communities that doesn't have DeFi, right? And being able to use this asset productively uh, in DeFi, I think it's going to be a big thing. And then XRPL, you know, Ripple obviously has a very unique edge when it comes to RWAs. And with Axelor, we're working with most of the RWAs here as well. So it's not something we've, I think we've, done a deep dive yet with, with your team, but uh, it's something we're prioritizing now and just bringing new RWAs over to XRPL. And uh, I think you guys have a big edge there and we can make it probably the biggest chain, right, for, for RWA um, adoption. So I think there's some interesting directions there. So you kind of already answered the next question, which is what would you foresee as the evolution of the EVM sidechain? So I assume real-world asset tokenization is probably uh, big. 
Yeah, and I'm sure you have other plans, right, to make it like a general purpose chain and like have all kinds of applications, but like, I don't know, to me, it just makes sense to focus on one thing and do it really well. Obviously, like uh, a lot of people across the globe use Ripple for remittances. So it's, again, a natural evolution to just have all kinds of assets. Uh, myself, personally, I use a lot of these RWA issuers, and there's not too many of them, right? I think until last year, we didn't even have tokenized treasuries on chain. But now if you know how to use crypto, it's very easy to just get access to like, you know, like treasury yields, which you'd have to go through hoops, like they're not even available in a lot of parts of the world, right? So bringing those assets over, yeah, I think it's going to be super interesting. So it's definitely interesting when you're considering the EVM sidechain, the stablecoin, and even the XLR bridge. And it also makes me think of other tokenization initiatives like Xonix with Ripple. And right on Xonix.com, we can see the tokenization opportunity, digital assets tokenized by 2030, $16 trillion. We also have right here the value of tokenized public equities, funds, and bonds by 2030 at $1.8 trillion. So I've played clips of Xonix before in their tokenization platform. We can see Ripple, we have Amazon, a bunch of different organizations. And just referring back to this news that came out earlier this year with Xonix in the XRP ledger right there. And we also had earlier this year Xonix working with PwC for this tokenization and digital assets program in 2024. Out of 700 applicants, Xonix was chosen as one of the 11 companies to join the groundbreaking initiative. And we also know back in June, we had this partnership with Ripple and Archax. So Archax is regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority in the UK. And they said this, Ripple collaborates with Archax to bring hundreds of millions of dollars of tokenized RWAs to the XRP ledger. So we get it. We've seen all these big headlines. It's all talk until we actually see real execution. But this is the potential. And obviously, the tokenization of RWAs is absolutely happening according to all these projections that we're seeing for this decade alone. And we're going to see this on a bunch of chains, but I absolutely want to see the tokenization of real-world assets on the XRP ledger grow. And even other things like Archax. So on Archax.com, you can go to Businesses, and then you can click Invest. And we're going to see some of these other tokenized funds. We know that Hedera and Ethereum are involved for Aberdeen, a huge wealth manager. And we also have BlackRock. So different treasury funds and money market funds, it would really be cool to see a fund actually tokenized on the XRPL. So I know this SEC appeal is super frustrating with the SEC versus Ripple case just delaying and delaying, but as Brad Garlinghouse has said, the law of the land today is that XRP is not a security. So I would like to see other ETPs, ETFs, even a similar trust for XRP that HBAR launched. So we can see right here, Canary Capital, the first United States HBAR trust. So I've gone over this in a previous video, and this is awesome for HBAR. And what's interesting about this is this is the first dedicated HBAR investment vehicle in the United States. So it'd be really cool to see this for a variety of other assets. And considering that XRP actually has clarity today, I'd hope to see some. I also saw this promotion shared by iTrust Capital. For anybody that rolls over a 401k into iTrust Capital as a crypto IRA this month for October, you can earn a $100 bonus with promo code ROLL24. So I have iTrust Capital linked in the top of the YouTube video description, and I also retweeted this if you follow them on Twitter or X at iTrust Capital and use this link. Next up, I also saw some really interesting posts, and they do have me convinced, shared by Cowboy Crypto 313 Just a bunch of information related to the SEC appeal and making it look like this has all been planned. So referring to this gentleman who left his enforcement director position on the same day the SEC filed their Ripple appeal notice, and he's heading to a Mill Bank law firm. So if you want to check it out, be sure to follow Cowboy Crypto 313 He's been posting a bunch of interesting things. And everybody's sharing additional information in these threads, so super interesting. And at this point, if you think this is a conspiracy, you just haven't done your research, if you go back to even all the ETHgate stuff that people have shared for years, I mean, all the proof is there. So I know there are tons of great people diving down the rabbit hole sharing this information, and I really appreciate it. At this point, I know there's corruption. I haven't really dug as deep as I used to. I'm just over it, and I'm just waiting for price action. And even right here, referring to Stephen McClurg over at Canary Capital, remember they did just do the HBAR trust. I'm not sure if you meant to say HBAR, or if this group actually did file for a Canary XRP ETF back in September. If they did, I actually didn't know, so really cool. So I must have just missed this. This is on Fox Business, and they did share right here that the website shows Canary XRP ETF was incorporated on September 24th. So when I go to the State of Delaware website and actually search the entity name Canary XRP, we can see Canary XRP ETF and Canary XRP Trust. 
So we can see this. We know the Bitwise one was legitimate, so I think these are legitimate as well for an XRP trust and an XRP ETF. So super cool. So I guess just ignore my ranting earlier in this video when I was saying I hope to see one for Canary. Now just hoping to see that these applications are approved. We know that Brad Garlinghouse recently said that he expects to see a bunch more ETFs. All right, just two more things and we'll call it a day. So we have Peak Network set to launch this month. So hoping for a successful launch, I was looking at Crest and I did see that they were slowly adding some tokens into circulation. Let me refresh. So it went up from, I don't know, 54, 55 or 56 million up to 60. We also know that the IBM Tech Exchange is taking place, I believe, on the 21st to the 24th, discussing Proof AI. But what's really, really strange right here is when we see Henry Guo, VP of Product Management, Proof AI. When we click this, there is no mention of Casper Labs whatsoever. That to me is super, super strange. So I don't know if people have been asking questions in Telegram or what's going on. And on his LinkedIn, it says VP of Product Management AI full time at Casper Labs, but there's no mention of that on IBM's tech exchange for a list of speakers. So I know I already ranted about this in videos last month, but just wanted to point that out as we're getting closer to the tech exchange event. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button and sharing your thoughts down below. As always, you can find all links, including resources for charting, trading bots, platforms, wallets, portfolio trackers, and exclusive discounts in my link tree at the top of the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.